welcome to the shop today. I'm Marshall. Hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel down there and hit the little bell and you'll get a notification when I make a new video. Uh, today, um, I've been uh, summoned upon to work on another Rickenbacker. Um, it's my second one I've had in the shop. Um, interesting guitars. Really fun to work on. This one is in excellent shape. This The guy that owns this guitar has taken extremely good care of it. Um, and he's done his own setup work on the guitar. And uh, there are a couple things that I'm seeing on the guitar that definitely need to be uh, addressed. Um, but he was complaining uh, that the guitar is making some uh, odd noises uh, back behind uh, the bridge and saddles. So uh, we're going to take a look at that. Um, I've plugged the guitar in and played through it. And uh, I didn't notice anything like blaring out of the amplifier that would have uh, made me think that there was something uh, terribly wrong with the guitar. Uh, but, you know, it may come down to um, when doing studio work with this guitar, he may want to put a piece of tape over it. I know a lot of uh, studio cats, they do that. Um, they don't worry about it so much, but if you're recording a guitar like this um, and little frequencies and things like that can sneak into your mix, and uh, when you're under a microscope recording a guitar, um, it might be something that you'd notice more so than if you're performing live in a band environment. Um, so, a really beautiful guitar. We'll take a look at the guitar uh, right now. Here she is. Meet the, uh, the Rickenbacker. Rico Sound. Beautiful guitar. And as you can see, the owner of this guitar has just taken extremely good care of this uh, thing these are just fingerprints on the on the metal and we'll clean that up um, I am going to hit these frets with um, some 2000 grit uh, polish paper and um, we'll pull the uh, truss rod cover off there and make an adjustment the neck is almost perfectly flat right now um, there's no neck relief in this so uh, the string height here at the 12th fret on the low E is measuring uh, 4 64 ths and on the high E it's actually almost 5 64 so the, the string action is a little... Hey! Somebody's calling me. How about that? Uh, I better answer that. I'm from. So back to what we were getting at. Uh, the string action here is real interesting the way it's set up. Um, so it's a little low um, we should see 564 here on the low E and about anywhere from 4 to 364 up here on the high E string. The other thing I notice is uh, the pickups are way too close to these strings. Um, in fact, when we fret a note up here, it's actually hitting the pickup instead of uh, allowing a note to ring. If you fret the string up, this high right there at the 20th fret uh, the string starts to hit this pickup pull piece and what that does um, the magnets in this these pickups will uh, uh, grab your strings and be drawn to them and stop them from vibrating so having your pickups too close to the strings can really kill sustain on a guitar like this and make it extremely bright. Uh, he said he was having, didn't really like the, the sound of this neck pickup, so I'm going to make some adjustments to that with respect to the height. Um, he says he has the um, intonation set up correctly, and this looks really good. Um, that's what a properly intonated guitar should look like. Um, but uh, we're going to change uh, the string gauge. You'll notice he has a wound uh, third string on this. We're going to put a set of uh, 12s on here. Um, he's trying to take this guitar into a little bit lighter gauge string. Um, I think in hopes that it will... Um, I believe these are 13s on here with a wound G string. I don't know if it's a custom set of strings, but we're going to put on a, a, a set of not even stinky any balls, 12 to 56, with a plain G-string, so not a wound G-string. So we're going to swap that out, um, which is going to alter the neck relief and intonation of this guitar. So I'll have to do that setup. All the electronics work, the Rico Sound function, I plugged it in today uh, using the Rico Sound uh, stereo by Mono. 
uh, cable and everything seems to be working just fine with respect to that. Looking like the neck radius is about maybe a nine, nine and a half, I'll measure that. This is gonna have the dual truss rod in there, so we'll pull that off and so we'll have to make the adjustment to that. So really beautiful guitar and very well cared for. Uh, instruments. Nice to see guitars that are in this uh, nice of shape when people bring them in instead of being all gummed up and gooey. So I took some notes uh, while the customer was here. Uh, you can pause that and take a look. There we go. Well, as with all guitars that come in, I uh, take the time to oil the, uh, the truss rod adjustments and get that oil down in there and get those things lubed up. Uh, I'm gonna let this guitar sit and let gravity do its thing to get that oil down into the thread. I dropped my camera. I was noticing a bit of buzz uh, when I hit an open, open strings on this guitar. Um, the strings were rattling on the frets uh, and that shouldn't be happening. So uh, we'll get that squared away, uh, put a little bit of relief in that neck um, raise the string height a little bit for him and see how uh, he likes that. So we'll uh, get this thing uh, rocking here soon. After pulling the strings off of this guy, I did notice a little bit of a cross grain uh, traffic going on here. Um, maybe on a fret crown or um, these markings may have been on the guitar. Uh, when it was uh, manufactured, really beautiful uh, wood grain though in this guitar. It's just just it's gorgeous. Frickenbacher recommends that you change one string at a time. Some rough spots I can feel with my finger. Um, I don't know if there's debris on there or what, but we'll clean that up, get that stuff clean. But the main discovery that I found, uh, this is called a Rico sound, but I'm thinking they should have maybe called it a Rocco sound. Look at how that saddle rocks uh, and the deal with that is that these uh, screws that adjust the uh, height of the uh, strings are these screws are not uh, hitting the the plate underneath this evenly um, they are one screw is this side looks pretty good on the on the base side of this but the treble side if you look at that the set the set screws might be one's a little bit taller than the other um, likely why we're hearing some rattle and they do have some springs underneath these screws go between the screw and the and the saddle plate these uh, screws right here to adjust string height so we'll take care of that for him and maybe we'll relieve some of the uh, rattle that maybe he was hearing I did notice a little bit of rattle um, I thought it was might be the strings uh, hitting the frets because uh, the string action was so low um, which I am going to raise that. So in conjunction with raising the string action slightly, and we're talking about a 64th of an inch, I'm hoping to remove all of that rattle and hum. The Racco sound, well, that's probably part of it. That's probably not a good thing. We'll fix that. Uh, the Rickenbacker uh, manual, actually for this guitar, calls for 12s. Um, and nowhere in the... Uh, manual does it call for a 13 gauge string at all from Rickenbacker so we're gonna go back to some 12s with an unwound uh, third string which would be the G string I love saying that G string and we'll get that uh, set of strings on this guitar and see if that doesn't help with uh, maybe some of the rattle that he's hearing um, with the dual uh, truss rod of course there's a lot of reinforcement inside this neck to keep it from bending or swooping or anything but uh, they don't call for um, they certainly do not call for um, 12 gauge or 13 gauge uh, strings on this guitar so we are not going to do that while I had the strings off I went ahead and evened out these uh, screws so that no more rocky rolly Rocco sound uh, going on here. When I do the uh, adjustment for string height, um, the in, the uh, radius is set here uh, with the saddles uh, to follow uh, the neck radius. You'll see that these uh, saddles are set in a curved line as, as the uh, radius of the neck. You notice uh, that there is a curvature on the saddles and there's nothing I can do to raise or lower those uh, other than uh, raising and lowering the uh, distance of height 
of the of these strings, which will raise the string height off of the frets. Um, and this radius here actually matches the neck radius perfectly. Um, really kind of a cool uh, design from Rickenbacker. I do not like the fact that this does not sit down on some sort of stud or something coming through here to keep this thing in place. I guess I can. I still have a little bit of rock. You might hear that little movement. Um, so we'll make sure that's perfect um, so that that does not rock at all. Rocco sound. Indeed. Okay, so I have the Rickenbacker uh, strung up. I've, I uh, ran over these frets with some 2000 grit and then hit it with some Never Dull to polish them. And they look wonderful. Uh, no blemishes, no flaws, just mirror-like. Really beautiful uh, frets. <clears throat> now, uh, one thing I noticed uh, when changing these strings, you might see a, a bigger gap between the A and the D string than you do against the E and the A. Um, just kind of an interesting move or setup on this guitar. Uh, these saddles are notched, so the string slides through a notch right here where it passes over the saddle. Apparently these two notches are, these are, these two are further apart or these two are closer together, but kind of an odd uh, happenstance. I mean, you see it once in a while, but uh, this is pretty, I mean, it, it just looks a little odd to me uh, that it's that pronounced. And here I'll show you from the saddle looking up the neck. Um, but you can see that that one set of strings is a little further apart. And these actually these ones are likely closer together. Um, the spacing on the rest of the strings are um, a little more uh, normal uh, than you can see that the, there's a pretty much an equal distance between each string. Um, even here there's a little wider gap when I'm looking at it, but uh, I just thought I'd point that out. It's kind of interesting to see that. That happenstance goes clear back here to the saddle um, on this guitar. Um, the way these strings don't really line up um, very well on the way back there. They're kind of traveling in odd uh Odd increments, so I, you know, I don't know if that's going to cause a problem, but I do believe that this saddle, the rattle sound uh, saddle, I, I'm pretty certain that I've solved some uh, noise issues with this guitar uh, that the customer was complaining about by making sure those are uh, all set to the right height. Now, when we adjust the action, what I do is um, if I need to raise or lower and I'm, I'm just measuring the outer strings for now. If I need to raise or lower the saddle at all, if I turn this screw a half a turn, I turn this one a half a turn. The threads on these screws are identical. And if I turn this one a half a turn, I turn this one a half a turn, and that keeps the tips of those screws at the exact same height uh, for making the uh, string height adjustment. So I'm going to do that. And stay true to form. First thing I got to check is the neck relief. Um, make sure we got some relief out here in the middle. Uh, we'll check that and then uh, we will check our string height and then we will set up our intonation in that order. If you do any of those differently, your intonation changes. So it's best to do the intonation. It's, it's proper and really acceptable only to do your intonation after you've adjusted your string height your string action, and your neck relief. All of those things will impact intonation, which is very important. <clears throat> things are strung. This guitar, um, I don't know if you can hear this. I'm hoping you can hear this ring. It's like a harmonic ringing over the top of that G string, especially. And We do something like this, put a piece of tape over these strings, you can hear that harmonic ringing. Still ringing. Well, uh, this guitar uh, had some pretty ominous uh, overtones ringing 
and what I discovered was uh, after setting up the intonation on the guitar um, the uh, harmonics vanished uh, it's kind of strange that that was the case um, and I believe that uh, part of the issue is uh, the amount of string uh, floating back here behind the saddles um, this A string was ringing really uh, prominently uh, when you when you struck the G string, and it is now silent. There's no harmonics ringing out over the top of that, so we have solved that problem. I'm waiting for the owner to come in and give it a play and let me know if he likes what we did with it. So we shall see.